Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 274 of Ask Dave. This is another stay-at-home special, and today, instead of showing fancy charts and graphs and curves, we're going to do something very simple. This is an introduction to so-called UHF connectors, which is the generic term that's used for uh, PL259 and the SO239. Just kind of look at them, see how they work, what they do. Um, the term UHF is a misnomer. Uh, was applied back in the 1930s when coaxial cable was developed and uh, these uh, connectors were uh, done. Uh, at the time, UHF meant anything above 30 megahertz. Of course, we stick VHF in there now and uh, UHF is anything above 300 megahertz. These connectors are poo-pooed by a lot of people, you know, who want to be seen as especially brilliant, I suppose. Um, they actually do work pretty well. Uh, in the United States, they are ubiquitous on all full-powered radios, like 100-watt radios, like the ICOM 7300. They're on all the mobile radios, like the... Uh, I've got this uh, Anytone D578 UV mobile here, and uh, they're also uh, on all the antenna tuners and amplifiers and everything like that. So it's nice to get an introduction to them. Now there's two things you can do with them. You can get bulk coax and then attach these connectors yourself, which takes a little bit of practice and skill, or you can buy cable with the uh, connectors already on, which is sometimes a much handier way of doing the job. So let's go to the overhead um, camera right now and take a look. These are the two halves of the so-called UHF connector. Uh, the term UHF connector is really a misnomer. These are good HF connectors. Although studies have shown that you can use these for VHF and if you go up to UHF you're going to lose a little bit. Uh, basically the center uh, conductor is soldered to this and goes into the socket like this. Now you'll note here if we look very closely let me pull this back the uh, the connector has a little notch and that notch connects into uh, some plugs have just a couple notches for these some it can go in a variety of places and then there is a screw on connector that screws on over this now you don't want to tighten these too much because they can get hard to untight. The general rule is finger tight. Finger tight. Now if you've got this up in the air on an antenna it might loosen with time and this is not a waterproof connection so you'll have to cover this with uh, some kind of rubber tape or coaxial or something like that. Now let's look at these parts. Okay this is called the SO 239. That's the common designator. In fact, this one even has it stamped uh, onto it right there. Um, and usually this is connected to a chassis and the antenna lead inside the radio comes off of there and then the case provides the, the other side. It doesn't have to be in a situation like this. For example, here is an SO239 type socket into a cable. So a normal PL259 um, can, can come into this. Well, yeah, there we go. Okay, and made up with it if you want to do that. Now I want to show you something a little bit about the SO239. You know, a coax cable consists of an inner conductor, some dielectric, and then an outer conductor. And the impedance of the cable is the 
it has to do with the ratio of the diameter of the outer conductor to the diameter of the inner conductor. You'll note that here is about the size, a little bit bigger than the center lead of say RG8 or RG213 or LMR400. And it goes into this right here, that sleeve fits over that. Now the problem is that that sleeve there has a bigger diameter than the actual uh, cable so you get a little bit during the period of time that that sleeve lasts which is from there to there you get an impedance bump the impedance actually goes down to about 30 ohms or so so uh, a lot of people poo poo these for that at hf it's just not an issue at vhf and uhf it can be now one thing you can do this is a uh, digital S WR watt meter by MFJ and you'll note the connectors on the back. The connectors on the back have a honeycomb uh, type of uh, arrangement and by doing that that changes the dielectric from just plastic to plastic and air and that raises the impedance through the connector there a little. So that is a sort of a mitigation of that effect. Now, there are quite a number of ways of mounting these. The SO239 is ubiquitous on the back of uh, HF radios that are designed for a full 100 watts. You'll find these on antenna tuners and everything. So, these are very common. For low power connections, you'll see the BNC more, but uh, this is, I've, I've set up all my uh, equipment with adapters from the BNC to this because all my antennas are set up this way. Let me just show you one of the adapters. This is a BNC connector and the other end is an SO239. So I can use my antenna leads that are uh, SO239. So SO socket, uh, SO, let's see, that's SO 239, SO 239, and this is a PL 259. Now there are lots of different forms of this. On this one, the uh, outer connector actually comes off back this way because you put the cable in there and you'll note that it's got some screw threads on it so that you can put the uh, uh, screw this over the, the braid of the cable. You have to cut the braid back. back. I've never really done that very successfully. But then you have to, in these little holes right here, you'll see the braid. And your challenge is to get in there with a soldering iron hot enough to uh, solder that braid to the connector without melting the central uh, insulation there. Okay, and like many amateurs, I don't always weld all four. And so this is one reason we go to crimp connectors. Let me show you some crimp connectors. But before I do that, let me mention that this connector, which is designed for RG8 coax, RG8U, has a little adapter that you can put in here, which brings down the outer diameter there. And you these things just screw in and uh, this one you can get them for RG58 coax or RG50 uh, RG8X. RG8X is actually thicker than RG58 okay and you still have to solder um, the braid on the thing uh, in, in these little holes right here okay so um, it doesn't make things easier, but it does make it possible for that thing to work. Now let me show you um, a connector. This is an, a PL259 right here. And what you do is you stick the center conductor through and it comes out here. And then you put the braid 
you slide this on so that the braid is over this and then the ferrule goes over it and you use a crimp tool to crimp the living daylights out of that and it will hold that braid to the ferrule. Can be very nice, uh, much easier. And then you solder the uh, inner conductor and make sure that it isn't extra solder bumps on it, uh, make it hard to go into the connector. So you have to uh, be sure to uh, either file those down or just don't create them in the first place. This is an example of LMR 400 with a crimp connector on it, okay? And it's soldered, soldered there in the center, and then it's crimped on the outer side, okay? Now one of the problems is if you put any stress pulling on this, eventually the braid or the uh, shield, I'm sorry, the plastic will work its way out of there, and that's not a good thing. You don't want to put that on there. Now, this right here is a, a, a piece of coax that comes already with the connectors on it. This is a hundred foot of uh, DX Engineering's version of RG8X. They call it RG8XE. And they come with connectors already attached. Now, these are the type that you can screw back so you can see the little bumps right there, the little bump. Let's go up a little higher here. See the little bump, okay? And push it all the way in and get that bump seated and then bring this up and screw that around till it's good and finger tight. Um, by the way, this is becoming very common to purchase coax with connectors on them already. Uh, so much so that um, I begin to think that um, that's the way everybody's going these days. Now, for the reference station, I'm. This is a reference station item right here. Hundred feet of coax with connectors on it, so you can run all the way to your antenna and all the way to your radio which in this case is the ICOM 7300. Now, in future videos, we're going to talk about uh, the lightning arresters and ground systems and things like that, which will go in between. This is a specialized connector from Times Microwave. It is a connector for only LMR 400. And they have a special tool for it. And interestingly, if you look up in here, down at the bottom, you can see that there is something for the wire to go into. But if you look really closely, you'll see it's a little crimp. If you push the wire into that crimp, it spreads the pins apart, and then the pins keep the uh, connection on the center conductor. So there's no soldering on this side. No soldering at all. You'll also notice that this connector does not screw back. Uh, and if you look down in there, you can see that uh, the little, uh, on there, there's two little bumps so that it will go into properly mating with the uh, connector, uh, the SO239. So this would go uh, directly, directly into the SO239 like this. You don't push it in, but you screw it like this until you get there. And you kind of wiggle that to make sure that that little notch goes down in there and you get a nice tight uh, thing. Um, by the way, these come with uh, a shield on them like this. I'll show you what this looks like on an actual connector. And that's this right here. It's got the a shield out here which helps with waterproofing. This is not a waterproof connector. And PL259s are not waterproof. Now, end connectors can be made waterproof, but they're only rarely used in the United States, mostly in great big stations where every last dB counts. Okay, and this has got that uh, uh, Times Microwave. It's Times Microwave cable. It's genuine LMR 400. 
and it's got a times microwave connector on the end which is very nice so what we see here I just wanted to introduce the PL259 and the uh, SO239 together these are called UHF connectors although hams are using that term more and more it's a misnomer it comes from back in the 1930s when anything above 30 megahertz was considered UHF and now it's uh, just a, a name that sort of stuck around these are not the greatest UHF connectors but you'll note that 2 meter radios and 440 radios have SO239s on the back and you lose about 1.1 dB which is very 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 uh, I'm sorry about let's see no you won't even get a dB loss it'd be less than a dB loss uh, for these things okay there you are you have seen the SO239 in two forms and you've seen an adapter between the uh, the PNC and the that ends up in a 239 and then there are the crimped uh, connectors uh, the big and then here's the one for smaller uh, coax and they've got their respective uh, ferrules uh, on here right there okay and then here is the uh, solder on connector and we'll just put that back on there so we can see it and this solder on connector happens to have a little adapter for SO or for uh, RG8X cable so we can put that up there and then we've got this one from Times Microwave up there with its little ferrule and that includes our or concludes our introduction to UHF connectors the PL259 and the SO239 well there we've done just kind of a little broad overview of uh, what's going on uh, the famous impedance bump uh, the uh, honeycomb connectors uh, and then the regular ones that we see and use every day um, a lot of hams these days don't go to the rather uh, significant amount of bother to uh, properly connect connectors to bulk cable and so they purchase cable uh, which is readily available in all sizes with the connectors already on them so um, there you go uh, let's see I gotta toot my own horn that's enough tooting for this video until we next meet 73.